Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. We're here today with Nathan and Jamie. And they're with Fence Consultants of West Michigan and they have installed this big, beautiful fence to protect our high voltage power supplies and keep us from electrocuting the neighbor kids. So, your job, sir, is to tell us everything you did to get to this point. So, how do you start the process? Because we got to teach people how you, how you build a fence. Well, the first part is to set all our posts. Okay. And get them to proper height and level. Now, when you set the post, that's, you start by drilling the hole. Yes. And okay. you use really cool chopsticks for doing that, which yep. are kind of neat. They're way better than our chopsticks. Ours are like old, straight, wooden... Yeah, you've got these nifty yeah, bent ones. Knuckle yeah, knuckle busters is very accurate term. Yes. <laughs> so you dig the hole. Now the this hole. is an eight foot fence. Yep. Now the depth of the hole changes by how high the fence goes. Yep. All right. So for you start at a four foot post, and then for every foot, foot you go higher, you add three inches to the bottom yes. to the depth. Okay. Yep. It's kind of like the same thing they do with telephone poles. Is it's ten percent of the overall height plus two feet. Yep. So, okay, cool. Kind of same thing. And then it goes by diameter of the post. Whatever the diameter of the post is, you multiply that by four, and that tells you how much concrete around. Like ah, these okay. Are two and a half inch posts, so we needed 10 inch holes. Okay. So just multiply by four, yep. and that's your whole diameter. Yep, and that's the whole diameter. Okay. How far apart do you set the poles? Up to 10 foot apart. Okay. But what we'll do is each run, we'll break it down so the posts are spaced evenly. Okay. So you won't have a short section in the front and then everything you, else. One at each side. end and then one in the middle. Right. Or two or three or whatever, right. but even. Right. We'll okay. just measure it out and divide it up evenly and go, we try to get as much space as we can up to 10 feet. Okay. So. And you leave the poles, like if your pole's a little bit too tall, that's okay because you can always trim them down. Yes. All You're right. Better to trim them down than to have them too short. Cause yeah, it's real hard to stretch them. All right. So you've got your post set. You go home. Yes. Let the concrete cure overnight. The next day you show up, what's the first thing you do? First thing you do is get our top rail in. Okay, and the top rail is just a clamp with a cup, measure the pipe to length, set them in. Yep, and all that does is keep it from our pipes pulling in when we stretch the fence. Because the fence is under tension all right. the time, pretty much. Yes. So that, the pipe, it's, it's like a monocoque type setup where it's tension one way, compression the other, yep. and that's... That's what makes it strong. That's actually what makes it strong, not the concrete. Yeah. You know, a long pipe like this, even with that concrete, you could get a lot of leverage. It wouldn't take much to tip the pipe across. Okay. But once you stretch that tight, that's what holds and the whole fence. It's the two opposing forces up on top it of the bar pushing out and the fence pulling in. Yes. Okay. So you set the top bars all the way around. Yep. And then, then the real work begins with stretching fence. Yes. Now, you start with uh, the tall, skinny, flat pieces. Yep. What's that called? Tension bar. Tension bar. Okay. And or that's flat bar. That's laced in one, the last row of the fence through yes. the diamonds. And you clamp that on one side and then stretch the fence out from the other side with a really cool tool. Yes. I did not know those existed. Okay. I, I honestly, I thought that was always done by hand. Like, you just get a couple big guys and they lean into it or something. You but... wouldn't even be able to get it. <laughs> not even, not commercial anyway. Okay, so you, do you tension the fence, yes. and then put the clamps in and slide in other thing. Do you cut it after that point, or do you cut it before you put the bar in and I tension it? I cut it before I put the bar in. So you got to be pretty much right on. Yeah. Okay. We usually leave it, like, uh, with a shorter run, we leave it maybe two inches slack. If we had, like, a 200-foot run, we might leave it six to eight inches short. Okay, but it, it isn't a whole lot. It's only no. six, eight inches isn't a lot yes. over a 100-foot of fence. No, not at all. But once you start ratcheting it, that will get really tight really quick. So okay. if it's not long enough, then you end up weaving more wire back into it to make it the right length. So and that's got to suck bad. Yeah, and that, <laughs> that's time consuming and okay. <laughs> better off getting it right the first time. So then you clamp the second side of the fence, and now the main structure is done. Yes. So after that, what do we do? We'll come back with aluminum ties. We'll you, we use a bar to pull our fence up to height and then tie it as we go okay. down the whole length on the top row. And that sets the height all the way around? Yes, and that sets, makes sure our wire is right to perfect height all the way around. Now, I noticed when you installed the barbed wire, it was important that you always spin it the right direction. Like, you'd, you'd loop it through, and then you'd bring it around and wrap it around itself, like, like half of a rat tail splice. But it always had to go a certain direction. Yeah. Why yeah. is that? 
it had to go the same direction as a twist in the wire. That way, as you twisted, it got tighter, and it didn't unravel our okay. barbed wire. Because the barbed wire itself is actually a, yeah. a couple twisted strands. Yes. Okay, so this way it's always tightening it yep. more instead of unraveling everything. Exactly. Okay, so after the barbed wire went on, the last big thing was the gate. Yep. And that did not go as I thought it would. That was kind of cool. I didn't know that the bottom of the gate would actually sit in a pocket. These are called pull hinges. Okay. And the... Uh, the gate will actually have a, a leg at each side on the outside, and that will set right in the bull hinge. Okay. And that will give us our height. And then you set the top side of the hinges. Do those have a special name? Or is no, it just hinge? same thing. Okay. Yeah, they're just you know, bull nose hinge, bull hinge. Okay. Either one. And then it's a matter of getting everything aligned and getting it all perfect. Just getting it straight and okay. making it so it looks pretty. And then after that, it was just putting on the big latch, which is a rather formidable latch. You can yes. That's, that's quite latch. the latch. That's a strong arm latch? It's called a strong arm I like that. And now all we have to do is go and get a really big padlock and we're set. Alright, so there's everything you want to know about the fundamentals of how chain link fence is installed. And we want to thank Nathan for coming out. Thank you, sir. No problem, sir. Thank you, Jamie. These guys are from Fence Consultants. And the coolest thing is, they're three blocks up the street from our main lab here at 902 Leonard. So check them out. If you need chain link fencing or any kind of fence installed in the southwest Michigan area, Check out Fence Consultants. We want to thank them for helping out. And you guys, as always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.